Hello, this is H.G. Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play The Four Heroes of Light. Last time, we got our first crown in the game that lets us access the crown menu, so that way we can switch job classes here. So let's switch to Wayfarer, which gives us a little better stats, and it also gives us access to the Runaway Ability command, but that doesn't work all the time, so I don't really like it. But you can still assign spells to whatever job class you want. Also, you might have noticed the Freelancer job class there has a passive ability where normally if your whole party is wiped out in battle, you'll lose half of your gems and be sent back to the save point. It's half of one gem type, that is. I think it's chosen at random. But with the Freelancer, you get to keep all of your gems. So, let's head on east to the Guerre Desert and see if someone there can... Help us with the, or lift the curse on horn there. Oh, and another thing about the Wayfarer job class is that they have a passive ability that doubles the effect of any healing items, so you restore twice as much HP than you otherwise would. But anyway, we got a couple new enemies here. The big guy up front, Big Worm. They are weak to wind, but otherwise there's nothing special about them. The one we just killed there is a Basilisk who was... Flying, for some reason. I don't know how that works, but okay. But they are weak to fire! And I could take advantage of that, but their magic defense is pretty good, so you're not going to deal that much damage to them anyway. One thing you might want to watch out for, though, is that Basilisks can poison you, so you want to make sure you've bought a couple antidotes with you. Yeah, the first time I played the game, I... Didn't I did I wasn't even aware that there was a shopkeeper that could sell antidotes to us. But now I know better. So anyway, what you're supposed to do is just walk around the desert for long enough and then you get this little scene coming up here. Hey, how's it going? Why do you have a fire in the middle of a desert? I mean I guess it's nighttime, but still. Yeah, that's a general idea. Everyone got stoned for some reason. Oh, okay. What'll that do? Oh, well, all right. Sounds like a plan. Let's head on over there. More party members. How do you pronounce his name? Cringe? I don't know. I'm just going to pronounce it that way. But anyway, yeah, he is really, really powerful. So the first thing I want to do, I want to give him one of our Traveler's Garbs and the Fire Tome there. That'll be useful for him there. So let's switch over to him. Now, he does have his own body armor already, his robe there, that has better defense and magic defense. But I still like the Traveler's Garb better because it boosts his strength, so he can deal a little more damage there. Now... Cringe is a spell fencer, and that means he has the magic sword ability. Just like any other Final Fantasy game, you select the magic sword ability, then the spell, and it'll change the element of your physical attack to that element. And that'll be very useful in this particular battle. So this time it's going to be a lot easier to get through this, so I'll just show you how to put, or use Cringe to his maximum effect there. We got the big worm up front there. I decided to go with arrow there. Yeah, you have to have the spells in your commands there in order to actually change the element of your weapon. You can't just have the tomes in your inventory. That's not good enough. Okay, so I'm going to have Brant finish off the big worm there because he doesn't have much, too much HP left. And then Cringe, I'm switching to fire so he can take, take advantage of the elemental weakness of the Basilisk. But he won't have to worry about their high magic defense, and he can pretty much one-shot anything if you've got the right element on his weapon there. So yeah, Spell Fencer's a really good jab class. But anyway, let's head northwest and check out the Moonlight Tower here that Cringe was telling us about. I wonder how he knows all this stuff anyway. Well, I guess he did say he was one of those Moonfolk guys, but... Okay, we got a new enemy there, White. And let's see, I don't think it has an elemental weakness. Nah, it doesn't. 
Their cousins later in the game are weak to light, but not this guy for some reason. But anyway, you saw how there was a cow pal on the back there. That's one of the reasons why I'm using a bow, so that way Unita will go right after them. Yeah, right after them, right away. And you saw there, the white can blind your party members, but I don't think we need eye drops just for that because it's a temporary status. It goes away at the end of battle there. And here we get a much more useful weapon for Brant there. So let's switch that over to him so he can exploit that elemental weakness without the magic sword there. And by the way, one thing about status ailments is that no matter which one it is, if you wait around long enough in battle, you it can eventually go away. So if I was fighting that Big Worm Basilisk combo before there, I would kill the Basilisk, then just boost for several turns until the poison status went away if the Basilisk inflicted it on me. But anyway, okay, so we got those two treasures there, so now let's start heading up to the end there. Let's see, the path to the right leads to the end, but I want to go this way first, so that way, well, we can get a little treasure around here. And I didn't bring a dragon wing with me. Again, we don't really need that. But anyway, hey, hey all right, a better weapon that I'm going to give to Unita there. There's really no point in casting magic right now. So, I'm not going to worry about that, but it is a little stronger, and both of those weapons that I just got, those hit the back row first. And a lot of times, that's where the cowpels or other rather dangerous enemies are going to be hiding out. Otherwise, melee weapons, you got to target someone in the front row first. Maybe I could have brought both fire tomes that I had, but I don't think that's useful. Well, we got an adventurer there, but I don't think we need to use that. Ah, so what's that? Ah, there it is. What do we get for our trouble? What are they called, anyway? Ah, Merkmal? I don't know what that is. It's a MacGuffin. Don't worry about it. Oh, okay. Well, in order to do that, we need to get out of here. But one more thing before we go. Let's head over here and get a little more treasure. Okay, well, I'll just meet you back outside then on the world map there. Okay, we're back. And like Cringe says, you hit the Y button, boom, you get your map of the area. So let's just well, follow the yellow brick road. or Well, the sand paved road, whatever. All right, we found it. Let's see if we can find a cure for that curse around here. Maybe if I rested up all the party members, or all the villagers here, that would make the status go away. But anyway, haha, -ha, hidden treasure. So yeah, now that we're here, yeah, we might want to rest up, just in case. Now there are eight treasures in this village just like every other one but we're only going to be able to get six of them right now because we can't go everywhere in the area here but we will later hmm, i guess that's just an ordinary well but that's not an ordinary bush hey, hey oh yeah kicks ass and takes names let me switch around so maybe i can talk to cringe later on somewhere else in the village but anyway another hidden treasure here I don't need to talk to her because that's just another multiplayer shop that I'm never going to use. Well, there is one item that I want to get from the multiplayer shop, but I won't be able to do that until way later in the game. But anyway, okay, so let's see. I need to buy a couple eye drops. Not that I need them against whites, but I still want to have two of them for a boss fight later on that'll be useful there. Whoa, that's a lot of money for an Antarctic wind. Totally not worth it. I really, I almost, no, I don't think I ever use items that cast spells like that. I never really found them useful. Oh, yeah, we're kind of here already. 
What's the point of this thing? I mean, I can climb up, but... Uh, okay, I don't know what the point of that was, but... Anyway. Oh, okay. Yeah, if you tried going to a cave that's on the northern border of the desert there, yeah, you wouldn't be able to go through. So, not much we can do there. Oh. Yeah, I suppose. But fortunately, we don't have to deal with that. That's not our problem. Hmm. Looks like there's a house or a shop in the upper left there, but I can't get to it. Hmm. Well, I wouldn't worry about it right now. Let's see, I don't think there's any treasure there, but I do want to buy a lot of new equipment here. And, yeah, I want to sell one of my amethysts so that way I can get the money for all of it. Starting with the Wind Bow, that'll let her deal more damage and exploit the elemental weakness. And I also want to get our first elemental shield of the game, the Rock Shield, that will cut Earth elemental damage in half. It's really, really good. And we're going to need that coming up here. Same thing with the poison capes. They give you immunity to the poison status there. So, and there's the basilisks. They're around everywhere. So make sure you equip those rock shields and poison capes on everyone. That'll really help us out. See, that's all the equipment there. Oh, except for the wind bow that I want to equip there. But anyway, yeah, get the rock shield and the poison cape. I'm not going to sell my excess equipment. I'll just store it away eventually. And yeah, almost forgot about you. Another nice thing about ranged weapons is that they deal more damage to flying type enemies, which is why you might have seen Unita dealing a lot more damage to basilisks there. Let's see, I thought there was something around here. Oh, there it is. It's in the, the house there that has three doors for some reason. But anyway, over here. Awesome. Let's see, we got two more treasures that we can find around here. But I also want to talk to this guy. I forgot about that. Oh. Hmm, I wonder why. Well, I guess maybe you gotta ration the resources around here somehow. I mean, they're... You know, there's not a whole lot of water around. Huh. Well, we found you guys just fine. But anyway, yeah, this is the magic shop. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. Uh, first thing I want to do is I want to buy a couple Quake Tomes. Not that I need them right now. So, if you're short on money, you can put that off for now they are a little stronger than like fire and arrow spells but still I don't want to use them but I do want to buy two of those and one of the arrow tomes and we'll save those for later one more thing almost forgot another hidden treasure let's see there's a locked door there but man they got these locked doors everywhere huh Ah, oh, nuts. Well, I guess you're hoes then, huh? But anyway, if you go behind these houses... Ha-ha! The last hidden treasure that we can get around here. Well, it looks like they got a palace in the back there, but... We can't... Well, we can go up there, but... Anyway, before doing that, though, I want to make sure I... Get rid of any excess items like the regular wood shields. We don't need those anymore. And let's see. We got enough potions, I think. Yeah, that ought to be good. But let's see. Yeah, might as well get rid of one of our excess antidotes. And all of our old weapons. Although, yeah, we should get rid of all of our antidotes. Because we're going to be immune to poison. So that doesn't matter. We might as well just get rid of all of them. Okay, I'll get back and take care of that but make sure make absolutely sure you do not sell the king short sword that is going to be obscenely powerful later on for us but right now it's not so useful but i do want to withdraw a steel sword for cringe later on in our around here but can the kingdom of guerra help us solve the curse of the village of horn 
Find out next time on Let's Play The Four Heroes of Light. This is H.G. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day.